The birth of council housing estates in a few minutes? Come on. In the 19th century during the Industrial Revolution, there was a mass migration of people from rural areas to cities. And this occurred without any planning or housing provision. As a result, people lived in slums and there were big public health issues arising. When you have a uh, concentrated population in cities, you need uh, good housing and you need uh, the infrastructure to support life. And unfortunately, this resulted really in cities being characterised by poorly serviced slums. People were living in cramped, dark, unsafe, unsanitary conditions that led to the spread of many infectious diseases such as cholera. What was the Addison Act? Christopher Addison was the first Minister of Health and Housing. He was responsible for the passage of the 1919 Housing and Town Planning Act, which is often known as the, the Addison Act. The importance of the Addison Act lies in three elements. Firstly, uh, the generous financial support that was offered to, to build council housing. Secondly, the uh, commitment to high standards of council housing. And thirdly, and this is really important, the, the vital change, I think, for the first time, councils were required to build council housing. We built so many houses after the war. Around 1.1 million council homes were built during the interwar period. It provided that decent, secure, affordable housing uh, across the country that we needed. Despite difficult post-war times, council housing was still successfully delivered. This form of investment in housing infrastructure gave a great many people the opportunity to be well housed. Well housed in well serviced uh, communities. These council estates don't look like many we see today. Early council housing was generously proportioned and built at very low density. For example, in Bristol we have the Sea Mills, Hillfields and Knoll West estates, which were built to garden suburb principles. The creation of council estates saw a marked improvement in public health. Over time, this increased life expectancy, better sanitation conditions helped to phase out disease, and at the family level, families became smaller, which meant that their resources were less stretched, and we even saw an impact on their children, so their kids began to do better in their exams, improving their life opportunities. We need to look at the issue of housing holistically. It's not just the moral obligation to provide people with secure homes. It's the fact that we will have to pick up the cost elsewhere in our statutory services, such as the NHS, social care and education, if people aren't in secure accommodation. I think the question we should ask ourselves is can we afford not to provide council housing?